get this out. I'm gonna get this quenched off now. Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan, welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me, I'm a blacksmith. We're gonna be making some super simple hammer eye punches to get you started on the road to making your own hammers. But the first thing I need to do to start this project is to draw out some stock. This is the stock you just saw me drawing out from that forklift truck tine. It is 4140. It is one inch in diameter by eight inches in length or 25 mil by 200 mil in length. See, there's a link in the description where I sell stock like this, tools, and all sorts of other great things for blacksmithing projects um, you'll be able to find on that site. So go and check that out, support the channel a little bit. I'm gonna get this hot and I'm gonna start forging it. Okay, so we're gonna get ourselves a nice good heat on this bar to start with and I'm going to take slightly larger than normal hammer. I'll give you a close up of this just now and I'm going to start pinching in the very end. I'm going to use the bit to do this. I'm going to use the round side of this large hammer. I'm going to start drawing this middle in. I'm squeezing out the very end. Every time I get a bit of material available, I'm just going to nick that end. Two blows, turn it this way. I'm not gonna let that, that bit, so call that hit out. I'm gonna come a bit higher up. Chew off a bit more material now. Okay, straighten it up. Okay, maybe a touch on the hot side, but I'm gonna show you the same process again. I'm going to start a little bit higher up. Just going to work that round. As I work it round, I'm going to just bring it up a little bit each time and just work on a slightly further piece down from where I was before. Probably want to take that to about 10 mil, uh, 20, 10 mil square at the end or 3 8 square. I'm going to come with the flat side of the hammer this time. So you're just going to tidy everything up and just develop a bit more of an even taper because the rounded hammer allows us to squeeze the material out like between a thumb and a finger and the flat side just planishes everything. It's not got as much pressure as that round side. I'm going to come up onto the angle face. working down the length of the material. Just uh... Okay, nice and hot again. So what I'm gonna do for this heat, just gonna lay it onto the anvil. Just gonna lay it nicely onto the anvil. And just work down that length. Just get it nice and even. So we'll have a four-sided taper that tapers to the center of the bar. And then I'm gonna just tape it up onto the corners. And I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is set these in to start with. And just probably the last time I'll use this big hammer now. But what I'm gonna do, work down the length once again. This stops the material from twisting if you work down the length as opposed to going straight for the, the rotation. The material twists quite a lot. And all I'm doing is just working down that material, or up the material, to create four even tapers. Now, because the taper is wider at the top than it is at the bottom, by even taper, it means this size is the same as this size, but when it gets to the bottom, 
they're the same. So it's important that everything you do is really nice and even. Okay, I and mean, you can't see this on the camera, but it's a slightly uh, lower temperature. Now I'm just going to make sure all of the tapers are the same all the way down. So I want to work on four sides. So that's all four opposites done. And then what I'm going to do is I'm work on the others now. make a lot of mistakes with things like this is that they don't bring these tapers right back up to where the transition point is so if you make sure you do that you'll get a nice taper that doesn't have any set aways or any lumps in so there we are that's our nice even taper and what I'm going to do is just grab the brush just give that a bit of a brush down just reveal that taper a bit nicer like so and then I'm just going to grab the ruler and see if I can give you some measurements. So it's about three and a quarter inches there. I don't know if you can see that. About three and a quarter inches there, uh, which works out at about 85 millimeters. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna try my hardest now to show you this. Uh, again, with the heat, it's quite hard. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it on a corner on the face of the anvil. So I corner of one of the octagons, and then I'm going to start forging the corners off there. So I'm going to rotate it around to the next one, and the next one, and then once you get all the way around, you should find that the anvil's done half the work. For you. And I'm also working up and down the length again because this will help prevent the shape from twisting. Get rid of some of that. Now. I did just say not to do this. But I find at the very end of the with your work and also at the very top the best way to sync that transition in, the best way to get that in together, is to do that small rotation. Okay, I'm gonna get this too hot, but nice good temperature. We're moving material a lot better than it would if uh, you did it a bit colder. Okay, so I'm gonna get a good hold on here. Okay, work down that length again. And all I'm doing is blending in the hammer marks, overlapping everything so it all looks nice and tidy getting everything looking real smart and it's pains here this is where you want to spend your time everything up until this point has been material movement now this is vanishing this is the finishing stage the blows on my hammer see I've choked up on my hammer ever so slightly the hammer and I'm using it in order to create um, really nice facets, lots and lots of nice facets and then just rotating it on the top and the bottom and that's hopefully going to give me a really nice area of rotation hundreds and hundreds of little facets there just tidy everything up real smart, makes it look real good just come over here and just get myself a bit of left on there The only thing I'm trying to do at this point is get rid of any large flat spots, which I could have, but I definitely want to get rid of those. And also, if there's any dims or hollows, if like me you have um, a little bit of scale build up that you don't want, um, or you've got unsightly hammer marks, now I don't recommend you do this until you've got the material uh, surface 
relatively smooth, but if, like me, you've got a bit of scale build-up that you want to get rid of, it's ingrained itself a little bit. You can take an old farrier's rasp. This is a um, very blunt farrier's rasp indeed. And just take a layer of material off. See how those little sparks are coming off there. And this will give you a very nice finish, which um, in some circumstances is acceptable for a, um, for a punch surface. Okay, back to our bigger hammer again. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna select a side that looks even. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm just gonna grip the big hammer, and I'm gonna put a flat in. I'm gonna work the flat down on one side. And this might shunt the whole drift over. If we turn it over now, the same on the other side. Okay, nearly there. Okay, this side of the anvil again, give you a nice close up. Lay that on the face of the anvil, I'm gonna lay that down so we're matching the, the angle at the back, and I'm just gonna come through. And just forge that. Forge that down, make sure it's nice and tidy, and do exactly the same. On the other side, just make sure that we're even now. Just, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And the overall finish is quite good. I am gonna have to grind, I'm gonna have to grind the cutting edge on, which I'm gonna do a bit of an experiment with on this one. Um, but one of the reasons why we need to bring the taper up into the original starting stock somewhat is because this is going to help us when we drive this in it's going to help us get our drift in so that once the uh, once we've driven this through we can drive our drift in and we won't have any troubles with our drift having to do unnecessary work also this is about a hundred mil or four inches in length it's a bit longer than a I might initially want it's a bit nat smaller on the bottom so I'm basically going to cut uh, I'm probably going to cut 3 8 10 mil off the end here to put our blade end on uh, if you are a beginner I would suggest that you make this a little bit fatter um, by having it this thin you get through the material quickly but it's going to bend on you if you're not careful right I'm going to pop this back in the fire in order to let it normalize uh, and then um, I'm going to do the grinding process of so what I'm going to try and achieve is um, to put a blade on the end, a bit like a chisel, but the, with radius edges. Let's see if we can do that now. Okay, here is our hammer eye drift after I've ground it. I was gonna try and show you me grinding this uh, using the angle grinder, but I just seem to get my elbows or arm or the angle grinder in the way, and you don't actually get a very good um, detailed image of me grinding this. So I'm gonna show you nice and close up now. Nice smooth taper, transitions into that blade shape at the end there. So nice smooth transitions into the blade shape there. I used a 40 grit initially, then swapped over to an 80, then a 120, and then a Scotch Bright and just tied it up. The reason for this, just to make sure that this is as low friction as possible. However, this scale finish up here, this uh, this um, this forged finish should be resistant or low resistant enough for the job that we want it to do. There are a few caveats. Make sure that it's nice and smooth, but also at a certain point. You want your hammer eye drift, this is a hammer eye drift, this is a hammer eye punch. You want your hammer eye drift to match the taper of your hammer eye punch, okay? So that's quite important. So it's best to make these in pairs if you can.
Okie dokie, and if you follow that process and you get to this point here, um, you will have a working hammer eye punch. You just hold this in your hand and hit it with a hand hammer. I definitely don't suggest getting a friend to hit this with a sledgehammer whilst you're holding onto it. It's not such a good idea, but if you did want to do that, you can make a set of tongs, or you could weld a handle on like you saw earlier on in the video. Um, you also would have seen me making a hammer eye drift. This hammer eye drift is almost exactly the same as this hammer eye punch, except from it's slightly longer and it's made from some bigger stock. So if you want to make yourself a drift as well, that's also, it's, it's the same thing. It's exactly the same process. I'm gonna go on now and show you how to use the hammer eye punch. It's gonna be a really brief overview. I'm gonna show you how to get that hammer, punch, uh, hammer eye punch into your work and how to draw out that hole and get this hammer eye drift set. Okay, so I'm going to take an initial heat. Uh, I've marked the work up. For this, I'm going to make this into a sort of Stanley pattern cross pin, but in my style. So slightly offset the pole here. I'm just going to initially just take this time at this temperature. I don't want to do any large amounts of forging. All I'm trying to do is accurately mark up. The problem with you doing this by yourself without any help is you have to practice that little flip that I've just done there with the hammer and the hammer eye punch. Because you can't pick it up with your hands and also putting, this, putting the tooling down and picking it up to pick up the tongs is slow. So that needs practicing as well. Okay, so that's a little bit off. I'm just going to straighten that up a bit and again. Lovely. Okay, so we'll take our stock pop them on the anvil and then what we're going to do is I'm going to get this first mark quench it off. I'm going to rotate it so this first initial rotation will take out any errors in the tooling and then I'm going to flip this over quench this off. Now it's important to remember to keep the tooling cool as possible and the, the, the cool by keeping it cool is basically don't letting it enter the stay in the work for too long. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to bring this over now. And the rotation through this way is going to take out any errors that we've got. And again, I'm going to rotate that and basically continue to do this. And it's leaving it in the work. Take it out after every time. It's leaving it in the work that's going to build up contact time, which is going to end ultimately result in this getting hot and bending or mushrooming. Okay, so this should be the last heat that I need on here. I'm going to take a hammer eye punch. I'm just going to come through, rotate it, get this out. I'm going to get this quenched off now. I'm going to flip it over, and I can see. The, um, the negative of the hammer eye punch in the, in the other side of the hole. So I'm going to take two hits on there, I'm going to rotate this, I'm going to have one more. Cool, quench this off again, flip this over, and we are pretty much through on that. Yeah. Okay, flip this over again. There we go. Quench that drift off again. Try and get this slug to come out. It's absolutely minuscule. There it goes. Okay, so that's the hammer. And there's a slug there that I've torn out. I don't know if you can quite see that on the screen. But that's the slug there. The hammer eye. I'm going to just uh, turn that around so you can see. We've got some light behind there. Okay, lovely. Right, I'm going to drive this through a bit deeper now so that the hammer eye drift will sit in it and just poke through just ever so slightly. Okay, so we're still using the hammer eye punch, but because the tip isn't doing the work now, in fact, the material's in contact a lot further up. The punch is thicker, it can do more work, therefore I can use it a bit more aggressively. But what I do need to be careful is that I'm not slamming that sharp blade into sharp, slamming that sharp blade into the into the anvil face. 
so I can do a little bit more work here now, just still keeping that cool. Okay, come over the hardy hole. Just making sure that we're not coming into contact with any of those over the heart, the edge of the hardy hole. I should really be using a bolster, I guess. But like I said, you can be a bit more aggressive here. And um, you can see you can soak quite a bit of heat in and this won't bend up. So it's, uh, it's uh, once you get to this point, you still need to be careful, but not as careful. Okay, I don't think this hammer eye drift is gonna go in yet. But there's our hammer eye. Uh, yeah, we're probably okay to start using that hammer eye drift now, right? Okay, so if I was uh, using this um, as a hammer eye punch, I would glove my hand and do it very similar. Right, that's all the way through now. Very similar to the way that I'm doing this now. And because the hammer eye punch is a hell of a lot meatier, we can get it in there, get a considerable amount of work done, and then get it out without it causing too many problems. It has soaked up some of the heat, but it hasn't caused us much, much in the way of a problem. That's our hammer eye, just there. Right, well I would do the other side normally, but um, from this point on I'm gonna leave it because this is basically your hammer eye. Okay, hopefully that was informative. Um, I think I videoed this video about three times now, um, uh, for varying reasons, mostly sound problems. It's quite a busy workshop here, so um, sorry if it seems a bit bitty, this video, but I've tried my very best. This came out really lovely. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching me make this and you've learned something. Um, if I didn't say this already, I'm not sure if I did or not, the stock that I sell up on the Etsy will give you two of these punches, um, and I definitely recommend getting some sort of uh, rubber uh, piping or some sort of banding or something on the handle here or doing like this sort of Brent Bailey style handle. If anyone's interested, um, I will also potentially put some sort of kit together where I'll just sell the stock and try and get some piping uh, or something like that for you guys and girls at home to buy up on the Etsy. I might even put a kit together with a hammer eye punch and a hammer eye drift, I'm not sure yet. See how we go this week, I've got a bit of time to put some stuff up on the Etsy and do a bit of work towards that. The other thing that I would be interested in knowing if you want to see is whether or not you want to see this uh, blank. This is the blank I punched the eye in. I've got two of these now from doing this video about four million times. Uh, but if you wanted to see um, me turn this into a big boy, but with a straight pin, uh, the big boy, this is a big boy here. This is also up on the Etsy, another plug there. Uh, this is a big boy here. This is sort of like a cute Stanley pattern uh, hammer, this is about two and a half pounds, this one. Um, but I'm gonna make one just like this, but instead of having um, a round ball on the end, I'm gonna put a, a straight pin on the end. I, wouldn't wa I want one, and I have enough material to do two. I could do that in the next couple of days. So if this video gets 500 likes, I'll definitely put that video up very, very shortly. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, please ring that bell for notification because it does tell you every time I make a video. I'm making videos as often as possible. There's been a couple of little problems and issues. Uh, like I said, I videoed this about three or four times this week. Um, and I've got a lot going on at the minute outside of the forge and in the forge. Uh, so yeah, that is everything. Thank you for joining me. I'll leave a link up here to a video of me making uh, the original hammer eye punch that you saw at the beginning of the video. I'll put something down here of me making some more tooling. This is the subscribe button and this down here, some random video that YouTube thinks you might like. So thank you for joining me. See you later. Bye bye.